Let's welcome Dr. Itzhak Shai from Israel, who is a professor of archaeology at Ariel University and director of Tel Borna Project. Itzhak, could you talk to us about one of the main objectives of archaeological project? Um, one of the main issues about archaeological project is, of course, why to dig in a specific site. And this is usually based on research question. For example, the research research question that I uh, was uh, interested in was a border of the town in the Bronze and Iron Age. What do you think is the most important aspect for starting an archaeological excavation? One of the main aspects of archaeological project is the budget. So the main budget comes from foundation. For example, uh, for the last, I think, uh, five or six years, uh, our project is supported by the Israel Science Foundation. You mentioned an excavation and budget were the big parts of any archaeological project. But can you tell us more about the people working at the site? Usually in uh, uh, excavations in Israel, we dig with uh, volunteers. The volunteers are very interesting. Some of them students from Israel and abroad. And when does the excavation season start? The excavation season usually takes place on the summer for four weeks and it is a big deal to prepare and because it's only four weeks you have to make sure that everything is ready and you are not wasting time on all kinds of logistics and uh, uh, focus and concentrate on the excavations as much as, as you can. What happens after the excavation? Um, after the excavation, we have the main task, which is analysis. Four weeks of excavations is much more than a year of analysis in the lab. We have restoration of the pottery shells. We have a carbon-14 analysis for dating. We have to analyze the stone object. We have to analyze a metal object. We have to uh, study the stratigraphy of the uh, uh, various levels of excavations. As well as the analysis and results discovered, what do you think is the main goal of an excavation? The main goal is the final report. And the final report should include all the data that we uh, excavated and uh, discovered uh, during this uh, archaeological project and this is very important because this data will be used in the future by other uh, scholars who would like maybe to challenge our interpretation but also to use it for their um, studies in the future. Thank you Yitzhak. We are now moving to Nashville, Tennessee to the newly founded Lanier Center of Archaeology to meet Dr. Steve Ortiz, Professor of Archaeology at Lipscomb University and co-director of Telburna Project. Hi Steve, can you tell us more about the role of an Associate Director? The role of Associate Director is undefined. It's, you know, you're, you do what the Director does, talking dig strategy, talking issues, and probably the best place is at pottery reading. You mentioned pottery reading. Can you elaborate more about that? Pottery reading is more of an art than a science, and it's very, uh, it could be very subjective. So it's nice to have various people looking at the pottery. There are pottery reading, and you bring uh, experience from different sites, from different regions. And tell us, what is your role at Thelburna? My specific role at Berna is to make sure that the digging is done properly. And so with um, two people, it's easier to move between different fields and make sure that things are being excavated properly. Thank you, Dr. Ortiz, and good luck with the new school. Next, we have Dr. Chris McKinney joining us from Texas. Chris, could you tell us about your role at Tel Burna Project? My, uh, I'd say my main role in terms of the archaeology I've done at Tel Burna, serving as an area supervisor in areas B1, and as serving as the area supervisor at Area G. Uh, besides those kind of, uh, those, those roles as, as an excavator, uh, I've also done a lot of the uh, logistics. Have you had any other roles at the project? I've also played a role in our publications and study 
associated with uh, the historical geography of, of Judah and specifically the site identification of uh, up till Borna. What is the main responsibility of a field supervisor? What our main responsibility is, is to oversee the excavations uh, in that particular area. And so an area can be anything from a single square to, uh, to an entire uh, topographical feature on a site. To be honest, making sure that we're digging clean and our bulks are straight. I mean, that's, that's the main thing. We talked previously about future projects, but can you tell us what is one of the future projects we have at Tel Burna? Since one of the things that we're very much interested in doing is uh, expanding our study to look at a site nearby, a site called uh, Kirbet Eter, which is a site that preserves the name Eter in the Bible. So in Joshua 15, uh, 42, it, said, it starts this district with Libna Eter. Thank you, Chris, this is very exciting. Next we have Debbie, Wersberg Kasudo in Israel. Debbie, you've been on a project for past few years as a field supervisor. Could you tell us more about your experience from these excavations? Being an area supervisor has been a challenge because it demands people skills and of course all my archaeological skills and every year I learn something new from the people, from the site. How would you describe the excavation? Number one, the excavation is an educational excavation. Whether we dig another half a meter or, or 20 centimeters will not make a difference if the volunteers and the students that are participating don't understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. And so we enjoy questions and I like to take the time out to explain everything to people in my area. Is there a specific part of archaeology that you particularly enjoy? One set of artifacts is very close to my heart, are called textile tools. And although the textiles haven't survived, um, they're poorly preserved in our region, uh, and especially for the Iron Age, which is the period that we excavate, the Iron in Late Bronze Age. So what we do have are the textile tools, which are usually clay or stone, and from these tools, we can uh, sort of bring together the story of, the, of what was being done at the site as far as textiles. Because Thank you, Debbie. I'm glad you work in such a narrow and specific field. Next, we're heading to Maryland to join Dr. Matthew Suriano, professor of Near Eastern Languages and Cultures at the University of Maryland. Matt. Could you tell us about your primary role at the excavation? But my primary role on the excavation is that I'm the epigrapher. What that means is that I, I'm tasked with studying any ancient inscriptions that we have, that we find on the excavation, specifically alphabetic inscriptions. What is your specialty and how is that used at an excavation? My specialty is in Hebrew Phoenician and Aramaic scripts. And that's, that's important on our excavation because so much of the study of the Upper Tell is focused on the Iron Age, the period of the Kingdom of Judah. And we are uncovering rather significant 8th and 7th century remains, which includes several stamp seal impressions, the most notable being the so-called Lamelech seals, which are called Lamelech seals because they're royal seal impressions that bear an ancient Hebrew writing along the top of the seal, the words Lamelech in Hebrew, which translates to belonging to the king. Yes, there is a real excitement at the dig when volunteers excavate the Lamelech seal handles. Thank you, Matt. Next, we're going to Germany to talk with Dr. Andrea Orendi, an archaeobotanist who works at the Ebhard Karls University in Tübingen, Germany. Andrea. For anyone unfamiliar, could you explain what is archaeobotany? Yeah, archaeobotany is um, uh, archaeology and botany. We try to combine um, the archaeological finds and in the archaeobotanical case, the finds are plant remains and I am looking at the macro remains like the seeds and fruits. Then there are other specialists which, for example, look at the charcoal pieces or which uh, look uh, at the micro remains like pollen, something like that. What will be your role at Tel Burna? But I am uh, at Tel Burna for um, analyzing the seeds and fruits, which are in general carbonized. 
And with the help of the archaeobotany, we can get some conclu uh, conclusions about uh, what was planted there, what had the people in, like for Telbona in the Late Bronze Age and Iron Age, what have they planted uh, at the site or, or what agrarian resources uh, did they use. Uh, you can also get some um, information about the environment, what uh, was grown there or what weeds were, uh, have grown in the fields. You work in the lab in Tübingen. Can you explain what happens with the plants in the lab? When the samples come to Tübingen, I uh, sort out the seeds, like macro remains, the seeds and fruits, which are normally carbonized. And then I try to identify the seeds and fruits with the help of some literature and the reference collection. Thank you, Andrea. That was very really informative. We are going east from Germany to Prague, where we have Martin Jalowski, PhD student from Czech Republic. Martin, can you tell me about your project and what were your tools that you're using at your research? I am a member of the team of Professor Heitzmann, uh, who conducted a uh, long-term geoarchaeological research at Telburna. Uh, we were using XRF device, which is very good when you are working during the excavation because you can very easily measure the soil samples and get the information about the content uh, of the elements in the soil or uh, in archaeological sediments. You mentioned the X-ray device. Can you tell us more about that? And we use a portable X-ray fluorescence machine. It it looks like a, a handgun, like it looks like a gun. It's uh, relatively small, and this device contains a small computer which produces tables, graphs, and other things. And those tables show us the content of the elements. What are the elements that this device measures? This device measures the chemical elements from magnesium to phosphorus, calcium, potassium, zinc, and also the heavy metals like lead, copper, and others. It's very important because we can connect those elements with past human activity. Thank you, Martin, and best of luck for your research. And for our last interview, we're heading to England, where we have Dr. Jane Gastra from University College London. Jane. Can you tell me what is your research and an excavation? For what I do on an excavation, a lot of it is looking at the reconstruction of hunting practices and also the management of domestic animals. So sheep, goats, cattle, pigs, uh, equids, so donkeys, horses, etc. So the animal bones are excavated during the dig, just like the pottery and the stone tools and the metal and whatever else we find and they get sent to me and then I wash them or I wash them with the help of the students if any of them still have energy after the pottery and then they get laid out on the table and identified and so we look at what species are present and then for domestic animals what proportions of domesticates are being kept so are they managing a lot of sheep uh, maybe they're doing wool exploitation or are they primarily herding pigs and then you look at the ages of the animals, which also gives you a clue as to what they're being used for. And also whether or not the site is growing its own food or being fed from outside. So a lot of, particularly in early cities, one of the clues that we have that these are cities is that they've grown beyond the size where they can grow their own food. I also know you use photogrammetry. Can you talk more about that? So photogrammetry I use both for my animal bone research and also for documenting the site. So the software is, well, it's, it uses structure from motion photogrammetry. So if you take one object and you look at it in very slightly different views, you can stitch all of those pictures together and the camera angles changing very slightly. There's so much overlap that the software can reproduce the 3D shape of a 2D object. So you can do that with very small things and you can do that with very big things. Like you can do an entire site or if you have a drone, which Bruno, you may know someone who has a drone. You can do an entire tell, um, and that'll give you the shape of the tell. Or you can do an entire building, um, and you can actually reproduce those in very high detail if you take photos of a high enough quality and enough of them. 
Thank you, Jane. Best of luck with your research. I know you have two major articles coming out soon. This concludes our call. I want to give a special thanks to all the participants of this modified Zoom call. If you're interested in digging at Tel Burna, please go to www.telburna.wordpress.com for more information. Thank you, and see you in the field next year.